Hey, it's Ross from RossLukeman.com. Today I want to talk to you about how to make a do-it-yourself solar generator. This is essentially a power system that you can use anywhere. You can put it in the house when the power goes out. It's going to have its own 30-watt panel attached to the top. And this can also be used as a power system in a van or RV. So you can put it in there. We can unplug the small solar panel on the top and easily plug in the solar array from the rooftop of your van or RV. So it's basically set up to take a 30 watt panel or a 300 watt panel and it's going to process that power and store that power just the same. So it's a pretty versatile little device and uh, this was requested. A couple of students have asked uh, how do you do a removable power system for your van or RV. If you buy a cargo van some people want to use it to actually haul cargo and so this would be a power system you could remove and use your van to haul cargo. And then you may, if once you've invested so much in your power system, you may want to use it in the house or somewhere else where you need a power source. So making a removable system like this in a box essentially uh, creates some opportunities. There are a couple of drawbacks in that, uh, you know, it's essentially an entire power system wrapped into a box. So as you can see, it's pretty tight in there and uh, it's kind of been squished down a little bit. That's uh, another reason I wanted to bring you in here kind of midway through the construction. I'm going to show you the components that we have in there before I wire it up. Because of the compactness of the design, once I wire it, it's going to be hard to kind of show <laughs> how everything's connected point to point. So I'm just going to bring you in here um, kind of during the design phase and show you how I arranged it and what kind of capabilities we're going to have inside the box there. And then as you can see, the case continues to go up. Essentially what I've done is I've taken the footprint of the battery and brought the case up with that footprint. And I'm basically let myself arrange the components and rearrange them using uh, double-sided tape. It's a, uh, a lifesaver when you're arranging these power systems. So I was able to arrange everything. And then once you get the final height, we can cut the box and uh, put our top on there and add our solar panel. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and zoom in and we'll talk about what's in the box and why those components were added and uh, what kind of functionality we're gonna have. But uh, before I zoom in there, I wanna talk to you, it is Cyber Week and uh, I've got an awesome deal for you with the Van Power Crash Course. This is a course that uh, is really years in the making. After working with several hundred students on their van conversion projects, I designed this course to answer a lot of the questions I've gotten over the years and uh, it's going to cover solar power, shore power, and alternator power as well as your battery types and um, just a lot of installed tips. And then at the end you've got uh, several bonuses. It's got uh, a library of power systems with illustrated installation manuals and uh, it took me two years to put this course together. I'm, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> But I basically put everything that uh, I wanted to put in there, things that I've struggled with, such as attaching solar panels to the roof. Uh, that can be a challenge. It's not always pretty. So I found ways to do it where it looks great. That's in there. And uh, I really answered a lot of the questions the students have had and some of the tricks that I've learned over the years of installing vans around the United States. And uh, I took my time putting this course together. But uh, for Cyber Week, I've shaved a cool $100 off the top and uh, it's a ridiculous deal. I, uh, I, if you're interested in doing a power system, you could definitely benefit from this course. It's got a ton of great material in there. And you're not going to have to read a ton of stuff. It's mainly uh, HD videos and then it's got just a lot of illustrations. It's got each power system has an illustrated manual, which was really hard for me to put together. It took a long time, but it just beautifully leads you step by step on how to install the power system of your choice. So really proud of this course. If you want to check out the Cyber Week deal, just click that link below. So with that, let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at our solar generator. So let's take a look inside the box. I want to start out by pointing out these two blue devices here. These are going to be used as remote cutoffs so we can shut down the system from the front of the box. So because it's enclosed, we're not going to be able to reach in and turn off a switch when we want to turn the system on or off. So we need essentially remote switches built into the system so we can have one on off switch outside the box. 
that will shut things down when we turn that switch off. And that is what these blue things are going to be. They are called battery protects from Victron Energy. We've got the 220 amp here and the 65 amp here. The 220 amp is going to be for our battery cutoff. And uh, how it's going to work is we're going to have battery positive here. We're going to connect to a 300 amp ANL fuse. And from there, we're going to go to the lug that says in here at the battery protect. And then there's another lug that says out. Now the lug that says out, that's going to connect to the rest of the system. And uh, even though it says out, we're going to have power coming and going through that lug. So what I mean is power coming in from solar is going to come in that lug, the positive line, and uh, power going out through our inverter. So our inverter is going to produce high voltage, 120 volt power, and uh, power out to our little 12 volt fuse block here for just 12 volt DC power for uh, 12 volt sockets and USB chargers and stuff like that we're going to have here on the front. So all of our positive lines are going to come into that bolt and uh, that's going to be your red cables of various sizes. Typically I would have a bus bar with multiple bolts but because we're trying to save space uh, we're just going to go to the one bolt and we really don't have that many cables coming in maybe three or four. It's going to be a little messier than I would typically like but uh, it's definitely going to work and we're going to save some space and have a very compact design. So what's going to happen when we hit that switch on the front, it's going to turn off this uh, large battery protect and isolate the battery from everything else. So power can't go in or out of the battery when we turn off that device here on the front. The other one is for solar. So let me give you a rundown of how the solar works. It's um, You'll have to bear with me. It's, it's kind of the most connections out of this whole system is handling solar, bringing it in, processing the power, and getting it to the battery. We've got the most connections over here. But uh, let's go through it. We've got the Anderson power pole connector here. This is um, Anderson power pole connectors inside of a PowerWorks uh, little inlet that I got. And we're basically going to drill a hole in the outside of the box. And that is going to be an easy way to plug and unplug multiple solar panels. So we can do our 30 watt panel, our 300 watt panel. It doesn't matter. Um, they're both going to plug in to that little inlet on the outside of the box. So the power is going to come in. So what happens after that? The negative side is just going to go to PV negative on the solar charge controller. So PV is for photovoltaic, another word for solar. That negative is just going to go straight there. The positive is the side that we typically are going to send through breakers and switches and all that. The negative can just go straight to the charge controller. And um, as I mentioned, the positive is going to make a couple extra stops here. We're going to run through the uh, battery protect 65 amp. And uh, the red positive is going to come into one lug and the red positive is going to leave out of the other lug. And uh, that's just another way for us to break that line. If we hit the switch on the front of the unit, unit uh, the large one is going to shut down and the small one is also going to shut down and break that line. So even if you have this in a banner RV, the sun is shining, the solar is producing, when you hit that off button on the front, this is going to stop that solar power from getting in and getting to the battery. It's just going to, to shut it down right there. So that is our kill switch for solar. So once it comes out of that switch, it's going to flow through and uh, we need some kind of overcurrent protection. So I have this little breaker box. This is from Midnight Solar. This is a baby box, I believe it's called. And it's got some DC solar breakers. But um, I think what I'm going to do is shrink this. It's a little bit uh, large. I typically put this in a large power system on a wall. But uh, what we can do is get a surface mount breaker from Blue Sea Systems and put that there. And uh, really another way to do this, we need overcurrent protection between the solar panel and the charge controller. And uh, overcurrent protection like a fuse or a breaker. But because we have different solar panel sizes, we want to be able to plug in whatever solar panel to this unit. If it's under 440 watts is what this charge controller can handle. Um, what we can do is get an inline fuse for each solar panel. So for the little 30 watt panel, it would be a 2 amp fuse. And then for the 300 watt panel, it would be a 10 amp fuse. And we can just put that inline fuse in the positive line 
coming off the roof or coming off the roof of this device, uh, either way, and that will provide that fuse before it gets into the box here. So that will provide overcurrent protection. And uh, what we're gonna do, whether we come through a fuse or the breaker, we're gonna come out of that with our positive and we're gonna go to PV positive at the charge controller. So we wanna stop at the charge controller because the solar is too high voltage. So the panels are gonna range from 20 volts to 40 volts typically, and uh, that's way too high for our 12 volt battery. It would fry the battery. And so that's what the charge controller is gonna do. It's going to step that voltage down and charge the battery at the proper voltage. And uh, you can also tell the charge controller what kind of battery you have, lead acid or lithium. There's about seven presets in the charge controller so it can give a specific charging algorithm to the battery that you have. And um, it's definitely going to step that voltage down, prolong the life of the battery. And the way that we are gonna connect it now to the battery, it's got PV positive and negative, and then it's got battery positive and negative. So the battery positive is just going to go to our system positive lug here at the back, and uh, battery negative is going to run to the negative. One more thing I wanna mention. <laughs> I told you solar was the most complicated. So battery positive, you don't typically connect it directly to system positive. So it's trying to charge the battery, right? But we're gonna put overcurrent protection after the charge controller in that positive line. So what I would typically do is I would come out of battery positive, run through a second breaker here. So this is a 30 amp charge controller. I'll have a 40 amp breaker. We'll come through the breaker and then out of the top of the breaker, we'll connect to system positive. So you're gonna break the line before and after the charge controller. So, or, or have the fuse from the solar panel to the charge controller, you could have a fuse or a breaker. And from the charge controller to the battery, you can have a fuse or a breaker. So you want it to have overcurrent protection on both sides of the charge controller. So hope that all made sense. I told you that was the most complicated part. It's all downhill <laughs> from here. The uh, solar part has the most connections. But at this point, let's go ahead and rotate the unit and we'll take a look at the inverter and uh, system negative and our battery monitor. So let's take a look at the other side here. We have our inverter and you can see this is system negative there at the back. So system negative is made up of a shunt and that is gonna be associated with the BMV712 battery monitor. Uh, I recommend getting some kind of battery monitor this one has Bluetooth, you could get one of the cheaper ones, but you want some kind of gauge on the front of the unit that's gonna tell you how much power you have left in the battery and uh, maybe how, many, how much time you have until the battery's empty. So that battery monitor is gonna be really convenient there on the front. And uh, the shunt is what measures the current and kind of takes an accounting of uh, debits and credits like a bank account of what's left in the battery. So the shunt's gonna do that job. And then I have a shunt bus bar connected to the outgoing side of that. And that is from uh, Midnight Solar shunt bus bar. And uh, it's just gonna give us a compact way to make system negative and make all of our negative connections there. So this is a 375 VA inverter from Victron. And uh, that's gonna convert to about 260 watts continuous power and I uh, believe the peak power is 700 watts. So this is kind of a smaller inverter. It's mainly for laptops, phone chargers. It's not gonna run like an air conditioner or things like that. Um, so one of the things about making your own solar generator is you can pick all the component capacities. So this battery is 160 amp hours. It's probably a little large. We could probably go down to a 100 amp hour battery. Uh, maybe the inverter, you want to boost that up a little bit and get to a 1,000 or 2,000 watt inverter. Uh, of course, that's going to grow your, your footprint uh, for the box, but you can choose the capacities of your internal components. So with the inverter, this is another item that we want to be able to remotely control. And one way we could do that is we could just um, have our switch that cuts off the battery on the other side, our uh, battery protect, and that would break the line between the battery and the inverter and it would eventually die. <laughs> um, but 
what we can do, we have this 12-volt uh, fuse block here for our 12-volt items. Let me see if I can stick it in place. Um, so the 12-volt fuse block is going to run like a 12-volt uh, socket on the front, some USB outlets, anything that's going to run essentially directly off of battery power. And so what we can do is turn the unit on and we'll have 12 volt power. And uh, what I'm going to do is do a second small switch and that can go into the bottom of the inverter and turn it on. And it's going to operate the same. Basically a lot of the Victron devices such as the battery protects that I showed you earlier and the inverters, they can be turned on and off with a 12 volt signal. So you're going to take a little wire and connect it to battery positive pick up your 12 volts, run that to a switch, and then out of the top of the switch, you're gonna come out with another wire and you're gonna to run to the device. And when the switch is on, it receives 12 volts, it turns on. When you turn the switch off, it's no longer getting its 12 volt signal and the, the device will shut down. And so that's how we're gonna be able to use some tiny little rocker switches on the front and uh, turn the inside of the box on and off the various components. And we could put an entire bank of switches if we wanted to have a switch for this and a switch for the solar and a switch for the battery. We could put three switches across the front and label them and be able to turn things on and off independently. So it's kind of a balance between how much um, you know, precision do you want and how simple do you want the machine to be to operate. So I say you know, bring it down to as few switches as possible if you can. And... Um, but that is the solar generator. I hope that was helpful. Now this is a two part series. So you're gonna to wanna to show up next week. I'll uh, link to part two below. We're gonna finish this thing off. We're gonna put our, our outlets on the front and uh, I'm gonna paint it gray. I think it's gonna kinda of look like R2D2. <laughs> so uh, I hope I made you curious. Make sure to show up for next Wednesday's video. And uh, if you want more help with your power system, you got to check out the Cyber Week deal. Link is below. It's a great course that will really help you with your van's electrical system. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.